Good morning and welcome to Inside Texas Politics. The video quickly blew up on social media, a rare moment of a state senator losing his cool with constituents. Don Huffines apologized for his tone, but said he is unapologetic in his support for school choice. The senator is in studio this morning and joining the questioning as always is Bud Kennedy of the Star Telegram. Thanks for uh, both of you for coming in. Morning, Senator. Good morning. Good morning. Senator, your office said that you uh, do not run and hide from a heated debate on school choice. That you don't, so we appreciate you being here. Well, I, I want to thank both you, Jason and Bud, for letting me come in today. Now, and first, I'd like to start out, though, if I could, yeah. by saying that my demeanor and tone were unacceptable. I have apologized for that, and, I, and I'm sorry for that. I've apologized in person to the folks in the, in the room. I've apologized in writing. But let me put it into perspective. I am passionate for the policy. Here's the thing, we, the folks in the room, we're headed the same direction. We all want the best public schools we can possibly have. They want, they've got a, their path, I've got a path, but we're all gonna get there. We're all gonna make sure that Texas has the best public education possible. S and Senator, that's what, why I'm what, so passionate about school choice. What sparked that reaction? I, you know, I, like I just said, it's, I, I, it's my passion. It, because school choice focuses on the student. It focuses on what's best for that student. It doesn't matter why that school's not working for, or that district's not working for the student. What we need to do is empower them to have a choice. Real quick, it reminds me, uh, uh, I'm just giving you a quick story, real quick. A, a couple coming into my office, my Senate office, beside themselves, crying, because they have three students with disabilities. And no matter what they did, no matter what efforts they went to, they couldn't get results that they liked from the from this ISD. I need something for those parents. We need kids waking up with a passion to learn, a passion for education. And we need a, a program that's gonna work that focuses on those students. And well, that's what School Choice does. Senator, in, in your apology, you called this an ambush style attack, but mm -hmm. these were constituent questions. These were teenagers and parents, mm -hmm. the Richardson PTA. Mm -hmm. Isn't that rhetoric of ambush style attack, isn't that over the top? Well, it, it's, it's always about coming to the policy. Well, well, was was it an ambush, do you it, think? It, 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 well, it's not whether it was or it wasn't. I've heard that, and it, the, the issue really is, though, let, let's think about they want to get there their way and keep in the status quo, and I want to move it a different direction, innovative, creative, proven method to improve public education, and it focuses on the student. And that's what, that's what school choice is about. We all want to have the best public education. Senator, I, I want to ask mm -hmm. you about, you know, your district, uh, Hillary Clinton won your district by five points in this election. If you've alienated more parents and, and young adults, you know, with this video, you know, what will it take for you? What will you do to reach out and bring voters in your district back to your party and your candidacy when you run for re-election? Well, I can tell you this, that I work very hard to communicate with all the constituents in my district. I know that I represent almost 900,000 Texans, the whole north half of Dallas County. I've had 50, uh, many town halls. I have two open houses every month to come and go as you please, uh, the, the Tuesdays and Fridays. And I spend almost all my time listening to my constituents. And I value their opinions. Are you running for re-election in this district? I haven't announced that yet, and I haven't made that decision yet. But I can tell you that I am focused on representing everyone in Senate District 16. What else are you considering? I'm, I'm not, uh, right now I'm really, Bud, drilled down to representing everybody in the legislature. Okay. This is a fast and furious time, you know, it, it only happens every other year. That's and what I was elected to do. And, I want to ask and, you about and, school, and, I want to ask and, you about and, school and, choice and also, before we get away. Uh, you're, you're a small government guy, I know you as a libertarian small government Republican, mm -hmm. uh, but having a situation where you make private schools more dependent on state money and expand the number of, of schools that, that want more money from the state and count on uh, you know, vouchers or savings plans. How is that small government? Well, you know, I've heard something like that before. And the point I want to make, it's another tool. Is it a magic bullet? No. But it is another tool that we need to use that's proven to be effective. Because there are many people in school and students in the schools that it doesn't work. It, it's not working for them. We need it to work for everybody. 
every single student. We need to be drilled down and focused on them. But let's stick with the election theme for a moment mm -hmm. here, Senator. Do you expect to draw a primary challenger in 2018? I'm just not focused on that. I'm really not. I'm, I'm, I'm serious. I am really focused on doing the best job I can do in Austin, Texas, well, down in our state capital, representing what's best for Texas and what's best for my district in Dallas County. Are you encouraging your brother, Philip, who's a chairman of the Dallas County GOP, are you encouraging him to run for Texas Senate if Van Taylor's seat comes open? I'm, he's perfectly capable of making that decision himself. Surely you talk to him, though. I can tell him the pros and cons on it, but I can tell you this. He's going to make a great state senator if he makes that decision, but he's going to have to earn the position. But he'll make a great state senator. It'll be an honor and exciting to serve my twin brother. Do you expect him to run? I, he, I'm going to let him make that decision. You, surely you've talked to him, though, about this. I have. Come on. I have. I know he's really focused on his big fundraising event for Dallas County. He's coming up, and he's got the, Donald Trump Jr.'s coming, and that's on March the 11th. So he's, he's, uh, that's a Dallas County party. And final moments here, too. The bathroom bill gets its first hearing this week. You support it. But have there been any incidents at all that this bill, if passed, would even impact? You know, what's important, I think it's a, the state has a role and making sure that our local school districts don't all have to deal with this issue. But is it a law and, that's needed? I mean, there's already laws well, that's on the, the books. That's the point. It, it is a law that's needed. Because we don't want a thousand school districts all bringing this up, cutting up their boards, having these, these very contentious issues, to, this issue to deal with. And if we preempt it all at the state level, a lot of that goes away. Who's bringing that contentious issue? Well, anybody could at each local ISD. And, and f final moments here, too. Do you expect us to have full Republican support in the Senate? Yeah, what we want, is keep the, we want to keep the boys out of the girls' locker rooms in the schools, and that's what the policy will be about. But it, is, is, is that happening right now, though? It, it has the potential to happen, yes. All right. Senator Don Huffines, we appreciate you uh, mm -hmm. facing these questions with us and coming in today. Thank you. And certainly. Thank you, gentlemen, for your time.